So we're, we're very pleased and appreciative to be joined by Congressman Tim Ryan of Ohio, Congressman Mike Boast uh, as well, and uh, uh, from Illinois. And, and uh, uh, Mr. Ryan is a longstanding uh, member of the Steel uh, Caucus, as well as a strong supporter of uh, the use of trade remedy laws in the United States. And Congressman Mike Boast is also a longstanding member of the Steel Caucus and also a strong supporter of the use of uh, trade remedies, a uh, supporter of uh, the steel industry. Uh, Congressman Ryan. Thank you so much. Appreciate the opportunity uh, to be here. Good afternoon. It's great to be with my colleague. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to sh share some comments this afternoon regarding the impact of excess global steel capacity and unfair trade practices on manufacturing jobs. My district is Youngstown in Akron, Ohio, just south of Cleveland and just west of Pittsburgh. And these issues have had a tremendous effect on the workforce in the United States, in Ohio, and in my district, where more than 50 percent of manufacturing jobs are impacted by the global steel supply issue. Countries like China are continuing to illegally attack our nation's manufacturing workers by dumping steel into our markets and diluting the price of the product. Growing up in Niles, Ohio, I've seen firsthand both the positive impact of a robust steel industry and what it can have on our community and the devastation caused by steel plant closures. Our nation's steel workers are facing an unprecedented threat, one that could jeopardize our steel industry entirely and our manufacturing base with a huge impact on communities across America as well as our defense industrial base. The United States steel industry is a vital component of our country's manufacturing base and a critical segment of our economy in the United States and in my district, and any disruption of our manufacturing base would have a catastrophic impact on our economy and our labor base. Manufacturing employment in Ohio is about 660,000, or almost 13 percent of the total non-farm employment. Manufacturing contributes about $100 billion or nearly 18 percent to the state's GDP. Ohio's economy has experienced resurgent in re a resurgence in recent years, partially due to new investments by the steel industry. However, these gains have seen setbacks due to the ongoing flood of imports and oversupply of steel. If we continue to allow foreign countries to create an unfair playing field, the economy of my state that has become one of the top steelmaking states in recent years will be threatened. Unfair trade practices and steel oversupply can potentially put over 300,000 Ohioans that work in manufacturing out of work. Furthermore, since each manufacturing job impacts at least four other jobs, the total number of workers affected by such unfair practices would be staggering. I have seen firsthand how devastating it can be when plants are closed and scores of workers lose their only source of income. Many are forced to leave their hometown in search of employment. The local community is then affected by loss of tax revenue, causing less funding for the schools, libraries, mental health services, parks, and other community services. Local shops and service industries are impacted since they lose their customers and will have to scale back with layoffs and eventually close their shops. Downtowns and neighborhoods are abandoned, and this negative ripple effect leads to greater inequality, increased anxiety, and can put communities back for decades before a recovery is a realistic option. Ohio is home to many steel pipe and tube companies, a segment of the steel industry that has been hit the hardest. Some of the steel pipe and tube companies in my district that would be impacted and could be impacted include JMC Energex, which is in Cambridge, Niles, and Warren, Ohio, TMK Ipsco in Brookfield, Ohio, Valoric USA in Youngstown, Ohio, and Bull Moose Tube of Majory. This particular industry has experienced nearly 4,000 layoffs since January of 2015, and uncertain conditions in the marketplace continue to threaten these companies and their workers. In 2015, the industry experienced several bankruptcies and plant closures. In addition, two leading producers exited the domestic market 
resulting in permanent job losses. While overall pipe and tube imports fell in 2015, the shipments from domestic manufacturers plummeted. By the end of 2015, imports managed to capture 60% of the U.S. market. The letters I provide today by Mayor Thomas Burnaby, who's the mayor of Canton, Mr. Robert Hankins, President and CEO of Arts and Stark, and Mr. Stephen Paquette, President and CEO of Stark Development Board Incorporated, and Ms. Beth uh, Leshner, Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity, attest to the potential impacts on our communities. If one of Ohio's major steel producers, Timken Steel, becomes affected by unfair trade practices and or steel oversupply. Strong trade enforcement is needed to, the lev to level the playing field for our steel workers and our manufacturing workforce. So I ask that you continue to support the American steel workers and vigorously enforce the current trade laws and continue to help our steel industry fight against the foreign dumping of cheap steel. I urge you to use new trade remedies as needed, deny requests for extension by foreign respondents in trade cases, and issue preliminary determinations that provide effective relief. We must send a strong message that our workers can compete with any in the world, but the playing field must be level. And I hope this testimony gives the Department of Commerce and the U.S. Trade Rep a better understanding of how important the steel industry is to Ohio and the United States. And on a personal note, I will just say that my grandfather was a steel worker for 40 years. And those jobs, those good paying middle class jobs that allowed his kids to go to college, his grandkids to go to law school and medical school and eventually become a congressman, are the backbone of our country. And the towns like Youngstown and Akron can't be on the agenda. They need to be the agenda. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time.